Yes, we have a good one. Total price for Miller Construction is nine hundred thirteen thousand seven hundred and twenty-seven dollars. Nine one three seven two seven. Nine one three seven two seven. Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, I, yeah. Thursday. Thursday the 16th. 
What was the estimate? Pardon me? What was the estimate? I just want to know. Driving up here, I was trying to remember what the estimate was. Oh yeah, I can bid a dollar less. Right. 
And yeah, that's why you got to trash all of them, and then and then uh, everybody gets to rethink their bid, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, like this guy, um, he's got if he he's got a lot of get three bridges at Killington. Well, I'm not sure he's going to get all three bridges. He might get none of them. Right. So then he's like, then he's going back here with a better price. If he gets the job, he's not going to come back at all. So. Yeah. Do they know that we're under the gun in terms of uh, time? Yeah, we gave them a schedule that they have to be done and out of the, they have to be all done September 1st. Uh -huh. And uh, we had that's... even sort of ordered the concrete. We didn't really order it, but we had the concrete manufacturer. Um, we explained the time frame, and he's like, no, I'll, I'll get it done for you guys. So, um, Trouble is, he'll only hang on to that mm -hmm. for a while, sure. and all of a sudden, he's gonna be like, I gotta, I get, I gotta fill your, right. your spot with somebody else. Okay. So I think that like tomorrow, I'd like to call these guys, and then maybe, maybe like Wednesday or something, come back and we can talk about it. If we, if we can do that. So. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be a bad idea to call Mary. Well, what's, what's she gonna know? What well. She know? I, I, she can't do anything, but we can get a sense of, of how locked in her figures are. One, one thing that does happen sometimes, a lot of times with these FEMA things, is FEMA will give you a certain amount of money, and uh, they have an estimate, and everybody's got an estimate, and when they see the real prices, they find more money someplace. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be good to call her and just say, this is where we are. We got, you know, they're both $900,000, basically. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and uh, ask her what, what we can do, you know, because she might say, well, these new grants are coming out, we can slide $300,000 over to you okay. and make this thing happen. Who knows? You know? Well, it is a large project, so it's... Right. Yeah. It, 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 they'll cover 90, 95, possibly, percent of it. But the big thing is whether or not it's so far above that they won't even talk to us. Oh, I don't think that's the case, because the State Highway Department has this happen to them all the time. Mm -hmm. Where they think they, they do this price and and it's like holy smokes and they go back to the governor and they figure out how to they don't they don't fund something else and they build a bridge and so I think what she would need to go is go back to her people and say um, here's a project you need to get built what do you want to do and, and you know, yeah, part of our difficulty is we got this time constraint yeah I was wondering well, I, was I think there's maybe a little more yeah, time right I mean, if in fact this is coming in way too high, yeah. I think they can ask for another Even extension. extension. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I, yeah, I think she could. Just remember when on the phone conversation, she's like, you know, ask for another extension. You know, so like, like something really has to happen, and maybe this is what yeah. really happened, and yeah. maybe that gets you more money. So, because the first extension was automatic; the state yeah. could give it. This one has to come from FEMA. Yeah, I think if if we explain that of the look at. Two or nine people who showed up for the pre bid. And two, two of them could have bid. Well, two I knew were not going to bid. No, the point is that the ones who showed up, because of the time restrictions, we only got two bids and they were very, very high. So it's a time restriction that they put on us by stalling around for four years. So with any. Uh, That'd be a good way to, to present it, I think, that not. Yeah. We can save money by giving us another, let us do it next year and get all this stuff done. Because this artificial time crunch that we're facing right now is man made. Yeah. But if we well, get you money, look, we should right. have to do it this year. So we just track what these bids are null and void and then it's going to make some calls. I think we should just sit on these um, because if we call Mary, uh, Mary and she says, no problem, I can get you another pile of money, then I can get through okay. It's, okay. it's unfortunate for the other guys that may have been getting like a whole lot less, but um, so yeah, let's do the thing. We just don't act on it right now. And did I hear that? I, I know there'll probably be a deadline on this on the contract, but if they're well into it, like it's almost done in September, can they keep going or they have to be away from the stream by? No, October 15th, they have to be out of the yeah, stream. It's not the stream, it's FEMA that is what this. Okay. See, what they're saying is, 
com uh, completed or substantially completed yeah. by September. Okay. Didn't say one September or 30 September, but by September, co completed or substantially completed. That's, a for, that's, that's softening the target from the 1st of September that we talked for a long time. Now, that may or may not be sufficiently soft for some of these to be able to get the job done. But then we get into the issue of the water, which is separate from the issue of FEMA. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the water that we had early. Yeah, we were able to move in early. They gave us permission to go in the water early to help with that time constraint. But they're not going to let us stay in late, I'm sure. Late is worse than our regular yeah. for the crews. Yeah. Um, I guess I'd like to also call uh, the co concrete contractor, I mean the guy that makes the precast, and see if he had a conversation with anybody, uh, because I know some of these guys were worried about that, mm -hmm. that um, I mean, somebody said, well, they'll promise you anything, but they don't necessarily got to deliver it. You know? And if it was a water problem, I wouldn't worry about this so much, because even if the concrete didn't show up until November, um, we're not going to be in the water with the fish. Right. It's the feed of money that's the problem. So, yeah. so it would probably be worthwhile calling her like tomorrow and just say, well, what do you do now? You know? Is she coming in this week or what's she coming? No, I'm not telling her. Oh, that's Todd's coming in this week. Here we call should her. Call her tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And I'll call these contractors and I'll call the precast guy and say, is there any, you know, would these guys scare away for some reason? Like, no. That's right. I guess that's all we can do right now. Yeah. It's the best we can do and just put these on hold and, yeah. and see what happens. Well, and once you look at all the pieces to this, if there's something really outrageous, too. Yeah, it's time to review it. Yeah, probably. Although I'm not going to change the price. If no, was, no, but if there's something that. Right. I guess I'm curious what the precast is in there. The uh, precast concrete. Um, I was looking at one, but it had a, a, a name that I didn't understand. <laughs> it's not unusual. Uh, concrete class A. You're talking about a pre stressed concrete box? Yes. Okay. Uh, unit class of 680. Total 206, 244. 206. I think they are selling it for like half of that. Is there just one? But, the, but even, yeah. the, even the install, well, you have to be careful because the crane is $30,000. Yeah. Because the piece is so heavy. So that puts you to like 140 and then you got to make a little bit of money, which yeah. you don't have to make $60,000. This would be all installed once they have the abutments in. The install is like six hours. Gotcha. And it's uh, I keep, I keep minimalizing it and I keep thinking about other things they gotta do. So but I don't think it's two hundred and some thousand dollars. What is it what is it on yours? There's two. This I'm not gonna say this right. Uh, oh Holden. No. Oh, that's oh, you. This, this is cold. <laughs> this, oh, okay. Uh, Butonimus? Hmm? Butonimus concrete is eight. But that's pavement. That's pavement. Uh, okay. Then yeah, there's another one, concrete class A. That's right. Oh, that's fiber class. That's, uh, Look at on page three, right here. Where now? On page three, pre-stressed okay. concrete box. Uh, okay. Uh, 197. 145, 600 yards. Is that, mm -hmm. It's close. Yeah. Is that close to you? Yeah, this is 206, that's 197, so they're close. Yeah, yeah. very close. So they're charging quite a bit uh, quarter in. Yeah. Well, they're charging 680 a linear foot. Is the, is the right rate here. Yeah. We have to give us unit costs in case we want to do something else. Mm -hmm. We can say, Yep, makes sense. More paving, it's some Well, uh, things get, as we have had in the past, we start digging and realize we need something else. So the changes happen. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, although the way this one is written is um, if they figure out they have to need something else, they're, they're for all, not ours. Yeah. It's a long sum job. Which is 
is why they're kind of covering themselves. Yeah. yeah. But otherwise, they'll nitpick you to death. They'll extra you to death. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's actually a lot of concrete along here because there's 40 abutments and wing walls, yeah. which is 115,000 uh, footing, 75,000 um, embedded floor. I read that one before, 25. Would it be hard to copy those? No, I'm going to have to put Yeah, it no, we have to stick with the other. I was going to ask you if you wanted to. Yeah. And you get to some merit. Just like, you know, you guys did an estimate. Yeah. You know, we did an estimate, didn't come out much different than theirs, so, but we used the state's pricing, so, which is so what you have to do. This is just so far above right. than any other job that we've done so That's far. Like 500,000, isn't that what the number that we yeah. were supposed six, to Almost 600. Almost 600. Well, okay, so um, it's probably better that you call than we, since we make the decision, you're out of the decision-making loop. Yeah, no, so I'll you're just, clean air, that was hard. Yeah, I'll just see if I can get them to, you know, either, uh, I'll find out why they didn't bid and if they're too busy. And first of all, I'll talk to, we had talked about getting the concrete from Carrera over in, or it is over there, and um, make sure that it's still available. I mean, that. They didn't tell everybody, oh, you're going to have to go to New York and buy it because we're not going to need it anymore or something. And then call each one of these and see why they didn't bid on it. And if there was an opportunity and they knew what the R, R, uh, as ours and the state's estimate was, would they bid it again? Because it's not going to be much work for them to bid it again. They already did the work. Mm -hmm. Or they've done part of the work and then said, well, I can't get it done. One thing that happens is, I find with guys, it's like, Oh, this is due on Monday, and they're working on it like on Sunday night, and it's like I don't have a price for the concrete. Exactly, right. and uh, it happens a lot. You would think that they were sitting there doing this for a week, they're not. They just well, and see, that's that's the problem we run into, and we're running into now on another project. We got this deadline that's our, uh, kind of right on our toes, and so it's really difficult to make sure you are right. I can see people doing. It. I can see them saying, "Oops, this is not going to work." Yeah. Yeah. Out of time. Yeah. The 50 cents comes from traffic signs. Oh. In case you're rolling. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I had to look it up because I wonder what in the world is going to be fifty three hundred and twelve dollars and fifty cents. At fifty dollars a piece. Somewhere in here they got about a tenth of the traffic sign. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay, what we're going to do is we'll hold these off. Yeah, we'll we'll do some more research. I'll call him so I can call Mary. You call Mary and, and then we we'll talk about this there. tomorrow. Maybe I can come back Wednesday or something. Yeah, whenever it's convenient for you. Yeah. Say again. Whenever it's convenient for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think once you talk to these, once you talk to Mary, it's no sense but unless she can't give us an answer. It might be like, I can't tell you. Yeah. And then, oh, I'm sure she's got to talk to somebody else. Yeah. yeah. The trick, of course, for Mary is getting a hold, getting a hold of her. Well, we'll I will send up an SOS. We'll do it emergently. <laughs> Emergency. Yeah. yeah. Red flags. Send blank checks. Send blank <laughs> checks. <laughs> That's, That's even better. That's even better. <laughs> we'll know in the house. Trust us. <laughs> right, we need a motion to... I would uh, thank us. I'll make a move, motion that we adjourn. Okay. Uh, a motion to adjourn, a second, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Bid opening, adjourn at 6.30. I'd like to call the select board meeting to order. March 8th at 13th. First on the agenda is to approve the March 23rd minutes. There's a small typo number one, the word addition. I'm not sure what that was supposed to be. The last double one? one? Huh? The double quote? Yeah, it looks like it's a quotation marks and the word addition. It's supposed to be a colon? Yeah. Uh, uh, number one on the first line. Also, there's a spelling mistake in number nine. Last 
last line. Dr. Flower seconded the motion and Mr. Brusso was appointed. Brusso. And obviously went through spell check, all right. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the problem with spell checks. Yeah. But there's also a, uh, a, a number 11. Right. Yeah. ATRS instead of ACT. I think on number eight, where Mr. Coyne addressed the issue of the house across from the school, uh, I write a letter to the property owner and ask him to secure the house by boarding it up. I think we've discussed, you know, some other, I don't know how to change that. That's just one of the things that maybe we would have suggested to him. And that hasn't been sent yet anyway. Maybe just to get the house. Yeah. We talked, we talked that. Yeah, it's not generalized a little bit. Yeah, just to so the house. If you want to say, you could put it in parentheses, for example, boarding it up. If you wanted to, you know, example. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Does that sound all right, Ed? On number eight? Uh, where it says asking him to secure the house by boarding it up, just stop at secure the house. Any other questions? Hearing none, I, I guess I'll move that we approve the minutes. That's amended. As amended. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, second on the agenda to is to approve the timesheets for the town office and Mr. Siley and Director Station. Number three is to sign the select board orders. Number four is public concerns. Ralph, you were here first. My, uh, i just like to know what the hiring, firing process is for road crew, Landfill, sugar, whatever, uh, town clerk, so forth. If this can all be done in a, if you have a contract or some kind of guidelines, that would be fine. If not, I would just like to hear it from some member of the board as far as how, you know, whether there's evaluation, whether there's a time limit of when you can say, okay, two weeks before, we've got to let this person know they're going, whatever. Uh, just, just need to know some some facts and guidelines. Um, and like I said, if maybe if it's spelled out in a, in a form, a contract or something that I can read, then I'm not bother you with, uh, you know, details until I read that. We do have reviews every year of all of our people that work for us. Um, and if things go wrong, you keep track of it and whatnot. Um, and it's just, Basically, it's in the personnel yeah, policy. Yeah, we have a personnel policy. Personnel policy. Personnel policy. Yes, yeah. That we get to you. Yeah. That looks, that would tell you. It's about nine pages long. Right. Do, Go do, does the person that you're reviewing a part of that? Yes, yes. yeah, review. So, so yes. you do it once yes. a year? Is it once a year yeah. policy? Is it a policy or is it a? It's something that the select board has done. It's never been a policy before when yeah, the select board members were here. And quite a few years ago, we decided it would be the right way to go. And uh, that's what we do. Because I know that's done in other businesses, or not even businesses, mm -hmm. but, you know, other places. Right. The other select board members, never, you know, years ago, they never did it. Yeah. And this was something that was done. Well, I think that's, you know, uh, a fair way to, you know, that's a question I had um, was also, um, you know, like I said, you asked if I would be on a search committee. Um, I would very much like to do that. Um, I also wanted to know that because if that's part of job description, that they're, I mean, so someone coming in for an interview, do they know they're going to be reviewed? I mean, are you, would you let them know that at an interview? No. I mean, if they were. Oh, yes, they would know that they'd be reviewed. Okay, okay. Review. okay. Yes. I just want to know if that would be part of it. So, yeah, that's part of it. Okay. Well, in, in fact, part of it was 
for example, there's a, a period of time when they first come on board to review. Mm -hmm. and I don't know, it's a six it's months. Six, it's a six, six months. months. Six That's months of review. There's a six month. There's a six month review. Right. Okay. And then after that, it's every year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think for road crew, I think the uh, supervisor does the individual. Okay. And then, uh, but I think we do. You do him. We do him. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And you yeah. do the, the transfer station. And yeah. And everybody else. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and I think the other concern in the room, the elephant, is these are handled very quietly between the individual and the select board. So what happens within those kinds of uh, executive sessions, for example, are never spoken about. Personal issues are not a public person. Yeah, so we, we kind of keep it close, but we most certainly are sensitive to the individuals, and they are on board <coughs> very, very early in the process. We would never blindside anybody. So if you make a, um, a decision in an executive session, um, when you come out of executive session, you, you're obliged to. We don't make it in um, exec executive session. We come out and make it. Um, okay. in public. Yeah. 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 So we have to so that you know decision. how we're voting. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So is that is that contract available, like a, in the policy? The policy, 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 whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't believe any of the Jamaican employees are under any contract. No, 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 no contracts. It's just a personnel right. policy. They're employees yeah. as opposed to uh, contract. And right. some yeah. are appointed. That's the other thing too. Is he's saying there are appointments versus hiring. Right. right. And so although they kind of manifest themselves in very similar ways, you come to work and get paid, but there's different ways of doing that. So not reappointing is not the generic equivalent of firing, for example. Yeah. And so there is some of that involved as well. And just for the, for the record, we are in the early stages of understanding the difference between hired crew or staff versus elected staff. Sure. And so there's some, there's some issues that are kind of unusual because we're working through that process. And we, we actually use the, guard, the, the guidance of uh, the town lawyer Paul yeah. Gillies about that, so that yeah. we weren't going off in a direction that would be illegal. So. I have a couple of other things not related to that, but first of all, I want to thank Andy. I mean, I listened to the minutes of the, uh, the March 23rd meeting and for bringing up the abandoned building and uh, following up on it. It sounded like you really dug into trying to find a, <laughs> trying to resolve something. Um, Along those lines, you mentioned a letter to the landowner. Um, is it possible to take pictures? Well, I mean, I you know, because in front of the building, one side of the building right. looks okay coming from the field, and then the rest of the building is just. I'm, I'm in wondering. contact with informally. I talked with his li liaison, mm -hmm. a lady who takes care of comes and visits the properties from time to time, and before we. Specifically asked for for uh, you know certain things. We, she had some questions that we were going to try to find some answers for before we send a formal okay. letter or fax or request to say, for example, build a fence around it or uh -huh. you know properly post it or board the windows up. Yeah. And I actually talked with her this morning, so. It's going, without getting into the little mean? bit of the legalities that I know about it, he pays taxes on it. Yeah. It's not really hard to determine if a uh, health office, I mean a health hazard. Uh, the fire marshal can't really do anything about it unless there's insurance on it. Yeah. And uh, we have no zoning. Well, I was thinking along the lines of uh, Appealing to his civic That's what we're pride. Doing. No, we're doing <laughs> because that. because years ago when the gentleman lived here, he was part of the community. I mean, yes. he wanted to be part of the community very much, and he, you know, I'm wondering if he actually is aware of the disrepair that that's fallen into. She is. She is. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm looking at it. I mean, we walk by it every day. I walk by it to talk our dogs and stuff. And, 
and then I see people in and out of it, and it's like, yeah. So I just wanted to thank you for following up on that. Yes, no yeah. problem. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I did have, and I wanted to ask Judy a question. <laughs> um, I, I, I just figured I'd wrap it all up in one. <laughs> um, a number of people are confused about the oncoming law. Right. And I think, is there a way we can reach more people about what needs to happen? I mean, you did a really great job at town meeting, but at town meeting, you mm -hmm. have a certain audience and you don't have that. I know when I'm in church, someone will say, oh, really? I can recycle this and I have to recycle. I didn't know I had to recycle. And so is there so yeah, many? Actually, my plan is, is to uh, write. I have one partially written already. Uh, what what are the requirements and you know to mm -hmm. try to help them understand one of the things that's keeping it is I'm still in contact with one of the places where it's going to be sold and I want to make sure that that is absolutely going to be happening before I put down in, in the uh, piece of uh, information that you can buy it here and can buy it here yeah. and so forth. The um, other thing is, um, I, you know, everybody's going through all this stuff. So the newspaper is loaded with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was reading, I think it was last night, Westminster, or one of them over the weekend, Westminster, who actually gave their people 52 free bags. I thought that was interesting uh, for one um, uh, week for the year. Uh, but what they are, what they have done is to uh, send a letter to every homeowner, and I, I would like to to do that. So that, I think that would be great. Yeah. So it, you know, they can read it and stick it away and refer yeah. to and it. And tell them where they might find pictures of what they can, because the pictures yeah. help. I mean, I know I've got that one on my refrigerator every time I look at it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like okay, I can throw away this cottage cheese box according to that. Right. Thing. Where people will say, "Oh no, you can't do that. You can't throw away yogurt." Yes, yeah. you can. Right. You know, so it's it's uh, that's the confusion. And I think people are yeah. willing to to abide by the law, but I don't think they're going to know what it is. Yeah, and and actually, uh, it has changed. I think it used to be one and two number. Uh, right, about well, two one, years two, ago, they were yeah. allowing three through sevens. Yeah, now, so now it's to, it? all the way up to seven. Three 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 on your, well, um, one through seven. One through seven. That's what but I But they're including three through seven as well. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it's I said. It's several styrofoam. That's going to go in. But I'll be turning things over and saying, see, it's a two on it. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I've been doing that a lot myself. Yeah. Oh, look, I can throw this away. You know, and then I stick it in there. Is there a way for you to get through um, somebody, you know, through this um, picture to pick, like, could maybe they be handed out at. Uh, like a town event, like something that goes on at the town hall that they could be available, those little flyers that show. Yep. Mm -hmm. District has those. Yeah, those so could we get some of those? Has those. Okay. So if the That's district has idea. those, could we get a bunch of those and have them yeah. sure. for people to pick up at a place like, right. like I said, they're going to have a talent show. Like the transfer How about the transfer station? Well, the transfer station. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> the you know, and that's only the people that go there. It's true. <laughs> it's the husbands yeah. or the wives that are dumping yeah. their trash, and it's not the well, I, all of those suggestions, I think, are really yeah. great because so, it, it yeah. is a major change. And yeah, it is major. We yeah. all we know what that. change yeah. is like. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, Judy, that was my concern um, because I, I missed town meeting. I had to go take care of my brother's sick. Uh -huh. but, uh, we walked into the town office the other day, and there's no information in the town office about it either. So it'd be nice to have that information available to people. I think there was some. There's some recycling information. Yeah. Nothing about the phase and no, 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 not yet. And part of that is because we're we're all working through it. Yeah. Uh, the district has just passed an ordinance that the oh, towns have to the towns have to follow. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, everybody's working through it. Yeah. And people are, you know, some people that I talk to that don't live in Jamaica are like, we have to do it? And I said, no, it's statewide. Yeah, you yeah. have to do it. Yeah, yeah, you have to do it. Yeah. No. Well, uh, Paul was telling me just a few minutes ago about someone questioning about what you do with diapers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and he, he said, which I thought was good, 
Uh, well, you can tell them. I can't. I don't have to speak for you. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> you say everything goes in the green bag. Uh, <laughs> people are going to be instructed to accept nothing that's not in the bags. Mm -hmm. Right. Although uh, uh, I think that they'll still be allowed to accept bulky waste and stuff like that, like we always have when you pay by check. Yeah, yeah. right. That, that, that stuff will still be there. And also, you don't have to put uh, the recycling in a bag. Mm -hmm. It's only the, the rubbish or the garbage. That's the one that goes that you're going to be paying for. Right. Uh, and then, of course, the construction stuff. Then. So I just think, you know, like again, you did a really yeah. good job, but again, that was a smaller audience yeah, smaller than, group than what there is out here, and I think, you know, the more we can get, and if there, I can do that, you know, the more we get out there, yeah. the better and less confusion for it would be. Yeah, so if you come up with some more good ideas, let me know, because we're all in this game well, together. <laughs> yeah. sure. Gallery, did you have? Yes, I wasn't sure whether it was a time for community uh, questions or not. Sure. Okay. Um, the Pikes Falls Music Festival is coming back to us in August. And since I, I actually crafted a letter on behalf of Susanna Lowy, they would like to know if the town of Jamaica would grant them use of the town hall gratis uh, during that period, which would be from. Uh, July 30th to August 7th. And one of the reasons is it's very well attended. It's, this is like the third or fourth year now. Uh, they don't charge admission to anybody. So there's no way to re recoup that money at all. And um, since they're scurrying to get as much as they can, and it costs a lot of money to put this on, every little bit helps. So if the select board would approve that, uh, that would be a wonderful step forward. I will bring this, if you want it, up to you now. Susanna will probably send the same thing that I'm trying to help since she's at a distance. And um, What have we charged them in the past? I'm sorry? What have we charged in the past? I don't know. Um, is it 250? I believe it's 250. A day? Or no, no, for the, no, for the whole thing. Oh, okay, I wasn't even sure about that, but uh, anyway. You would like to take a look at this. If it's something you would consider, it would be very much appreciated. One of the, uh, knowing a little bit about the town hall, one of the problems so, yeah. that we did have after they were finished was there was a lot of garbage that was left. Uh, you mean and like garbage, garbage? Yes. The, uh, they probably didn't know what to do with that. Uh -huh. And I think at one point I did say, bring it over to the Jamaican house, we'll get rid of it. Uh -huh. um, but like, was dog. there's so many people involved in it, I'm not sure if they know, if everybody knew the same thing. Uh -huh. um, you know, and we will be very careful about that. Okay. If that's the case, I wasn't aware that that was an issue. Yeah, it, you know, it really was. A lot of us ended up doing some of the yeah. work. Um, yeah, because it wasn't work. cleaned up at all after yeah. that either. It was. It was yeah. left a mess. I thought that they were made aware that that was part of the deal. That they were I thought there was a problem two there years is. ago when I thought they were. Oh, the same thing? Yeah. They were made aware of it for last year. I don't know if they. So. No, it was not last year they did not clean up. So we just I, left it. Yeah. I mean, I, it's hard to say. I'm not even sure. Do we have anybody who's really cleaning, you know, maintaining it? I think one of the regulations in the contract is that that is part of what the people who are using the town hall yeah. must do, is to clean up yeah. and leave it as they found it. If they leave it at the so, deposit, and yeah. they get their deposit back, it's right. cleaned up. I see. And there'll um, be uh, recycling bins there. Yeah. Well, well by actually, it's very interesting, they will have to be there by lot, right. in the yeah. town yeah. building yeah. has to have a recycling yeah. Been next to their trash bin. Yeah. Mm. Okay. No, that, that's fine. I mean, uh, again, back to is anybody maintaining the town hall now? Because I've gone in there so many times where it's obviously, you know, you know it, it's dirty. There's no choice. There about it. somebody that comes in before an event or something that will come in and clean it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll clean it after. But you know, it's, I, I just wondered if there's somebody who's really maintaining Well, they don't go in every week or anything to clean yeah. it, but if there's something coming up, they'll go in and clean it and yeah. take care of it. Well, I think since um, Jamaica Old Home Day will be the weekend before, there's a pretty good chance that 
going to be in fairly decent shape and we'll just make sure that it's well taken care of. Yeah. We'll take this under consideration. Yeah. I, I have a question though on that topic and I try to address this to Judy quickly. Is our water situation going to affect that performance? Well, that's a very good question. Mm. One that I don't know the answer. Right. Uh, it may not be water. Yeah. Facilities. Yeah. Right. I don't think it was last year. Mm. I don't know that it was since really. I think there was. There was. There was. There was. I, I, I there went was. to yeah. 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 Part of the, the water. Bar, part of the problem is is that a public building is supposed to have water and bathroom facilities. Yeah. So um, as we're working at getting the well yeah. accomplished, which has taken quite a while, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you open up another yeah. box <laughs> mm -hmm. when you don't really expect that box to open. And that one happened to be, uh, we don't know whether you can use that building uh, because it, you don't have potable water. Well, it's been used for so many performances over the, you know. It's against the law. Yeah, we yeah. have the state is uh, right. overseeing this right. attempt to get right. to the oh, well yes. here. So, so now we have yeah. ice. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's what I was talking about, the box. It was just kind of sugarcoating <laughs> okay. that a little bit. No, we're putting it get past anybody. Okay. Um, well, for potable water, I mean, you know, we can handle that. We'll have but it's water. hand washing. I yeah. didn't even know that until I talked with Chris Tomberg, who is the engineer for yeah. wastewater. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, it really needs to be potable water for hand washing. And if you think about it, that's absolutely uh, true, too. So I'm learning an awful lot about wells mm -hmm. and easements. and. <laughs> OK, well, if this is going to be a critical issue, mm -hmm. um, I will keep you informed. As soon as possible, please, yes. because right. you know the amount of effort and money right. and investment that's put into this is um, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah. if they can't have it, you know we'll have to figure out some yeah. other way of doing this. Do you have any idea when you will know? Well, uh, I'm in the process of talking to Chris Tomberg about that now, and he was going to try to look at. Well, we're hoping that the well will be in. Yeah, that's that's the bottom line. Yeah. Um, but if it's not, he's looking at some possibilities that we might do mm -hmm. uh, as a temporary situation. So uh, I really don't know anything other than I'm in conversation with him. Yeah. And he he was quite helpful. So uh, I think if there's a way, he's going to find us. Okay. Wait, what would be your latest date? I have no idea. I mean, I'm just um, passing this along, just doing a small portion of it. But basically, all the musicians are signing up for this. Yeah. And since they're all professionals, and you know, the sooner they know, the better. And if there's an alternative venue, mm -hmm. um, maybe that's something they can work around as well. But we've had this now for three years. And it was looking like it was going to be an annual Jamaica event. Yeah. And it pulls in a lot of people. Oh, it I mean, it's always very, very well attended. And uh, it's just a huge amount of effort. And if something like this is going to interrupt it, I really need to know it yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah. And get commitments I will, from... I will certainly work on that to find out some answers yeah. for you. Because um, they, they need to raise about... The last year's budget, I think, was around $20,000. Mm -hmm. And a furious amount of fundraising went into it. And it's not going to happen. This is not good. <laughs> yeah, so we will try to get Julie will work yeah. on that to get in as soon as that. possible. And we'll take the fee into consideration. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody I have one other ongoing concern. Sure. Uh, the website for the town. Um, is this like we're, we're going to put it back up? Uh, we have no idea when we're going to put it back up. We're so, waiting. is the concern about not having timely minutes or postings? We, I mean, everything has to be posted from every committee, from the school club to the planning commission to uh, the old home day. It's not just the select board; it's a lot of 
and people have to know they have to be posted. And that was from the state? That was That's from the state. state. That's a was that the state. intent of the state law to punish towns? Well, I have no <laughs> idea. I'm going to go to Montpelier and ask him that question. Uh, yeah, I do know that there's a bill yeah. that was put in the operation, House Operations Committee that was trying to at, at least make it better. But I don't know if it got out of committee or not. Yet. Right. Has anybody talked know. to Oliver Wilson? Yes, and I called our Senator Payne held up over and, uh, and that's what he said. Is that Working on a bill to, you know, alleviate some of the the strict um, right. Right. guidelines that they had originally put out there. So, that, but there wasn't any resolution that involved. So, yeah. right. Someone sure. has to have a lot of time to keep that up. Is that what the problem right. is? I mean, yeah. well, it's not just, it's not the time to keep it up. It's the time to get it from these yeah. other groups, right? Right. right. To, to get the information because because, because the committees are made of volunteers. And you're, yeah. yeah. And I do know that, to be more time you know, time. typically, if you're writing minutes for a committee, usually you do it the day of the next meeting. Yeah. You, know, you don't right. do it the day. <laughs> Valerie's been doing a great job with our minutes for the Historic Foundation, but that's the unusual yeah. one. I mean, even the Recreation Committee needs to be warned and right. all but, of that. But that can't be the intent of the state to punish us. Well, well I I <laughs> the intent is often lost <laughs> in the actuality. <laughs> It's called transparency. Around their open meeting. This is open meeting So, yeah. is, is there a chance that you could post the select board minutes on some other on some other website? Maybe a yeah, non check with that lawyer. Because we have to, we want to do it the right way. We couldn't, we don't want to do anything illegal. So, we have to, you know, check with But the select, lawyer. okay, the select board minutes are public documents. That's yes. Right. So, it's not against law for anyone to post those somewhere. That's a good question. I mean, because some people... Well, they're they're in the town office. Anybody, uh, anybody can come to the town office and look at the minutes. Yeah, I don't think they would, I don't think the law would prevent a private citizen from dispensing that sort of information. Yeah. It just, because of the open meeting law, anything we do is a one arm tied behind our back. Right, I don't know how it would... I, I don't know how, you know, if somebody got the minutes and then they decided to post them here and there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that would affect us if they think it was. Well, I don't know. Wrong, or I think that's when we're getting but, into things. But that you as an know. entity couldn't help and facilitate that and get another website up. No, not right now. Not yet. Well, I'm going to encourage you to talk to all Olson and our senators to try and get something changed on that because that's tampering information that needs to go out to the citizens, especially, you know, regarding the the transfer station regarding all the recycling coming up there was regarding the meetings, you know, information. That's information that town people need. Right. Luckily, we have BCTV. That's great. That helps. But, but they're not really meant, wait, I mean, you can hear the minutes from the week before. The right. It just shows you have to watch it the whole meeting. It doesn't, you just approve the minutes. Yeah. Can, yeah. It, it, it's one of those situations where we all shook our head at the time and our hands are tied. You could contact Oliver also. Oh, we've talked to Oliver. He's been here. We have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oliver's oh. newsletter has other, other, all the towns in his, is it his district? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and they have three of them website. have websites. There's two, maybe two that don't. And yeah. one thing I would, I thought of doing is asking them, yeah. how do you keep up with all that? Just as a curious select board member. But I don't think that was the intent of the state. But Oliver did say when I spoke with him that, you know, I, I noted too that all the other towns in his district, with the exception may not pass the website. So, I mean, maybe he'll do it. Yeah. We need to West that. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Anybody else on there? Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. does anybody have anything else? I just got one quick one and I'm done. Uh, it's probably hopefully a long ways till snow flies, but has there been any <laughs> thought given to what we might do for next year to possibly invest in a grown up snowblower? <laughs> um, <laughs> as Raymond <laughs> Allentine said, you know, when are you going to get rid of the toy? And mm -hmm. it's not appropriate for, and I know if you go to Townsend, you see them with a tractor basically, and, and there's probably some other towns around, and I just, I think it would be very wise to check around and see something that would, you know, part of the reason I mean, this year for sure it was just a combination of things with 
the guy that was running it going to the transfer station, and then we got that ice storm. But uh, with the proper equipment, you might be able to do that in a matter of an hour or whatever, two, where that would be taken care of and wouldn't be a whole day long proposition where it all froze to the sidewalks and then you basically, I'm just, you know, just throwing it out because I think it, uh, you know, I don't think in the whole scheme of things that's a huge amount of money when you think of the, the greater and the three plow trucks we have and two things, it's pretty small peanuts to, to try to keep the sidewalks clean. Just, just a comment. <laughs> yeah, I think we asked Keith to check into a machine. A machine of something yeah. that would right. do the job. Right. The one right. that I told you about that Chester had, that for snow removal, the one they had since the late seventies, I saw that same machine and it had a sidewalk brush cleaning attachment they were they were <laughs> using on it. So they you know, they may be capable of doing more than just snow removal. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we are looking into that. Yeah, right? good. Yeah. It's a very well, point well taken. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I did this too at one of the select board meetings. I can't remember on the list or one that I listened to I wasn't at. That it was mentioned that the only sidewalks that you're responsible for are the new ones. That's correct. That's the only, that's the only one that was that we are legally re re required. To Why is that? Because mm -hmm. as part of a grant, we are committed to plowing them. Okay, so what does that mean? For the rest of the sidewalks. Well, it means that we're still going to do the rest of them. Right. Well, that's what I wanted to hear. But I mean, the legality is we don't have to do those other sidewalks, right. but we do have to do. But them. as as townspeople who use the sidewalks, um, that's you know. Thank you. Okay. Well, I definitely agree. That's why whatever machine we have has to be able to work with the four foot sidewalks, not just the five foot. Right. Right. The other piece of that, on the flip side. The part that nobody wants to hear about. There are municipalities that not only expect but require the property owner to take care of the sidewalk in front of their property. Now, if you want to see two good examples, if you go out right now, your house and the Smith house, the sidewalks have been cleared and swept already. So am I. Well, I haven't been yet. <laughs> so is my downtown. Okay, I'll have <laughs> So is Happy Depot Street. So sure. Just but, so but, but you see, there is there is the responsibility. <laughs> But, but that's the other piece of it. One of it is the municipality, and the other one is... I'll be in the class. class. I'll, I'll expect you there. Okay. <laughs> and then I know. Okay. Yes, yeah, so by adopting an ordinance. Yeah, we'll see you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. You know, that's how we make people sign out. Anybody <laughs> can come in, but you gotta, can't leave without signing. Yep. Okay. okay. Next on the agenda is the PSU Thrill Bag selection. Oh, I'm yes. sure there's other things more than this bag selection, but. Now, I, I actually, we're going to have um, a demonstration. These are a couple that came that we are not too happy about, but I thought you guys could see them anyway. Um, but we met on uh, last week sometime, and we tried to figure out, I don't know if you have your papers in front of you, uh, the, the bids, and we really worked at trying to figure out what was what. And come looking at it, we had three uh, separate people that uh, gave us bids. And uh, the, the one that we liked the best was actually from Tags Bags. And that was uh, this one here. I don't know if you have those in your. Um, then that, these are the green ones. Right. And they have. Uh, the only problem that we have with the, the tag bags is that it's called the wave. And I was laying in bed the other night thinking, why is it the wave? Well, then it dawned on me. These are waves. Right. <laughs> and the swells. And these are for tying together. Yeah. To uh, not a drawstring. No. No. So the wave is secure. This wave. There, uh, one of them, that's why I brought this one. Here is a drawstring. 
but uh, we tried to measure these in our barrels, and this actually runs short yeah, of uh, our barrel as the drawstring. So it, it's about that high, I think, yet off of the ground um, on the larger one. And also, um, this was the same thing uh, for of uh, one that we have in our kitchen. That so that's just short. The 13 gallon? Yeah. 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 Is that the 15 gallon? So, 13 or 13? Uh, thir I think Thir it's 13. 13 gallon, I think so. But we like this one. Yes. And we like the, the price. price. The price. Yeah. And, and the reason was just because they fit in the barrels. Yeah. We actually yeah. like the drawstrings better. Yes, we like do. The but house. the drawstrings mm -hmm. don't fit in the barrels. Right. Right. Those in, those in. That's really the one it came down to. Right. So uh, our recommendation is, and also this company is close by, for they're in Greenfield. And in Maine. And, yeah, Maine. And I think they have a place in Massachusetts. Oh, I guess it's just Greenfield. So from our committee meeting, we are recommending that we um, go with tags, bags, container, and the cost, and, and the costs were almost the same with all of them, mm -hmm. they're just slightly uh, different. Um, and the cost per case for the uh, small, the larger one, no, the smaller one at 30, 24 times 33 was $32 a case. Uh, and uh, the larger one was $53 a case. How many of the cases? We, uh, 100, oh, let's see, 25 bags in a case. Okay? 250 bags in a case, sorry. And the case was yeah. uh, 32 and 53. Now that was for the better. Actually, tags bags had two types that we could get. One was a flat bottom. Is we have one in one. I think this was the one, the stronger one. Yeah, that's called Star, and it, and what he does is that was a flat bottom. That looks like a flat bottom. Yeah, the bottom looks pretty flat. Yeah, and the other one draws it. Uh, did I not bring both of them? Oh. Um. We only have one. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I got it. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the stronger one. Uh, okay. Uh, and this one, oh, is this a flat bottom too? Yeah, they gave us five of these, but how do we know that yeah. one is stronger than the other? Uh, when I spoke to the person, that's what he told me. Okay. That it's stronger because it's pulled down to the center of the bag. So there's more strength at the bottom uh, than if the flat uh, oh. across the bottom. Okay, does that make sense to you? I'm trying to picture it. Is it like a, a yes. accordion? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be uh, in sewing terms. You would gather it at the bottom mm. right. of the bag, so it wouldn't be as open. And, and the, would that affect the length? No. The effective length? No, that's or calculated. Uh, in some okay. the cost of four? Uh, yeah. Uh, I recall the star one, they're actually cheaper. Yes, they are, because it's 32, uh, and the flat seal, which is this, is actually 33.75. Oh. Okay. Uh, and 56 <clears throat> rather than 53. Uh, Andy suggested, which I think has some merit, uh, that we go with the green color uh, because it kind of highlights keeping Vermont green. I like that. Yeah, we better make sure we, we make sure that other towns know we're choosing green. Well, how does this compare to the green up Vermont bag? Wow. Uh, Same okay. color. Well, no, it, 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 these only come in two colors anyway. Oh. So it's yellow, it's yellow, it's yellow or green. green. And, and, uh, the green up that I guess to say town of Jamaica on it. Right. And ours will say Jamaica on it. I'm just thinking in terms of whoever the attendant is being able to watch from a distance the color versus having to read the bag. Did we? 
find out or are we still working on finding out if the other towns have Yeah, I haven't, I haven't followed through on that yet because to me, even if they do have the right. same color, our name is going to be on ours. Yeah. Okay. So Although we should let them know so that when they choose their color, hopefully they'll choose mm -hmm. a different color. That's the right idea. Can we? Well, we'll wait for lunch like this. But can we decide to purchase these? I think we need to. That's our recommendation um, as a, the committee, is that we get the uh, star seal and in the green color with Jamaica. And we're sure those, and refresh my memory, but we're sure those were the same line. Star. We better, and, and it wouldn't hurt to say, you know, we want to go with the stars, but we want to see one first before we go with it. Yeah, I'm wondering why something that's more complicated yeah, did anybody, than that is cheaper. Did anybody, get, wonder, yeah. uh, did anybody get a star bag? Because there were five no, of them. No, they were all the same. Yeah, okay. they were the same. Yeah. Okay. Are we going to, uh, what are we going to use for the, the, the town seal or just the recycle seal? Or do you have, we haven't worked on that part yet? No, we really haven't. One thing I should point out is that there's a minimum order. So we had budgeted 10000 for bags. The minimum order is about 12000 mm -hmm. So we're going to have to uh, buy more than we had originally planned. So can we make a recommendation? Yes, that is our recommendation. Yeah. I, would make a, I would make a move, motion actually, that we accept the recommendation of the committee. And to authorize them to get an order for 12,000 in these little. After, you want to see the star thing first? Don't you? I would like to see one with a star just to see that it, it does fit nicely into the. Do you want to do that and get back to the committee in two weeks? Or do you want to. No, I think we should recommend it. Yeah. The reason, the reason being is that we, we actually want these bags by the 15th oh. of May. Ooh. So, uh, and that was in the uh, RFP. Yeah, I, I assume it might be something to that effect. Yeah. yeah but the question in my mind is why would something that's more difficult to manufacture cost less? It's not that much more than manufacture. As opposed to a flat seam? No, you just put the thing It's a dollar seventy-five cent more. For the flat. Uh, yes. Yeah. And that's so it shouldn't. It won't take anything from the. We're just thinking that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I understand yeah, the thing. Yeah, I just haven't seen that. So. Yeah. And hopefully they can get us one in a week. Well, if they're going to receive a bid, I would think that they uh, give us yeah. $100. And I think we should authorize Judy to choose one or the other based on uh, okay. her evaluation of the star and make sure that it, it works. That would work. Okay. So let me amend my, um, my motion. I would make the motion that we authorize Judy to be in contact with the group. What are those companies called? Tags. 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 Tags and bags. Tags, bags, containers. And order 12,000. 12,000 dollars worth. Uh, 180 okay. cases of one, 120 cases of another. Okay. Um, based on her judgment of which of the two styles is stronger. Okay. Second. I'll second that. Yeah. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And then we'll blame you for this. <laughs> I'm going to get it anyway. Aye. 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 Not me. Not I. Is she white from work? No. She does, she does things. Upholstery. Upholstery. Did we have anybody that knows an artist? Are you an artist? You're a painter. Would you like to make the design? I don't know if you want to. He, he does paint, not me. Well, I'm thinking, do we want to put the, oh, the, the, the logo on with the town of Jamaica around it? You know, the town. Something yeah. Well, no, I know, but that's what I'm saying. We're going to put an order in. They're going to want to know what they're going to Yeah, we have to put it. No, that's part of the order. So part of the order. Deal. Yeah, but we just need to tell them what to do. Right. We can send an order. They're not going to send a bunch of these things blank. <laughs> However, we have a, uh, what we do with the town.
on trucks. Maybe whatever that Jamaica logo is, it's on trucks. I don't think we have one. Oh, we don't? No, it's no, quite a part. Quite a part one. Yeah, no. No, that's not going to work. So well, there, there's, a recycle, there's a little recycling symbol. It's a universal symbol for recycling. I guess we'll come with that. They'll come with this logo all over them. I don't think so. But this is there. I think that's their advertisement. advertisement. Yeah. yeah. But if this, if we use Our, this, well, this Okay. That's recycling. Like the recycling thing. You know, it's universal. Right. So thank you. Just what time you know it at the uh, old home there, Jamaica, uh, Turkey Mountain Road crew that had a float, had the town of Jamaica sh shield or seal on it, which was a palm tree with a sap bucket hanging on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a palm tree with a sap bucket? a maple tree. Relatively simple, it's not very complicated. It's not going to be a real production for them to do it. Right. Just change where it says. And it this. reminds people recycling. Yeah, it's recycled so part of it in there, and it says Tom and Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we could put a little, you know, little circle, a little circle over it for copyright. Oh, gee. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Judy Flowers. No, no, no. Okay, number six. We need to adopt the uh, we NIMS. Didn't, we did a second from the room. We did. We get a second from the room. Oh, okay. yeah. And they did say aye. We did? Well, that's true. Oh, I thought we did. I'm sure we did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> All right. Um, the NIMS adoption document for the town of Jamaica has been uh, signed. We just need the approval of the select board. Could you tell me again what that okay. means, Mom? Well, the National Incident Management System. Okay. What is your pleasure? The idea behind this is simply that we are adopting the NIMS procedures. Oh, I guess. We've done we've, we've been doing it for a long time. We have to do it officially every so often, and this is it's so often. Based on Paul's recommendation, then I will move yeah. that we adopt the uh, NIMS adoption. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Yeah. Any second. further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you for that hard work. Number seven, we have oh. excess weight permits from A.S. Clark, Frost Wells, oh, we've decided and pumps in the Carpenter right. Trucking. They have their liability insurance and they have all of their fees uh, with our usual restrictions. Then I would I would move that. Uh, we uh, uh, allow those weight permit requests received by A.S. Clark and Frost Wells and Carlton Trucking with the usual restrictions, including Town Class 2 roads and Town Class 3 roads. Do we have a second? And oh, to be signed by the Road Commission. To be signed by the Road Commission. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Does that hmm? disclaimer or whatever you ask for, is that on these permit? Should we why should, should we put it on there so every time we sign these we didn't have to have we specify those or do we do we have to the there's a there's an addition? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's on the, and then we add the, the root. The root yeah, I think Ed yeah. does that, don't you? Um, mm -hmm. I, Ed, oh, that's only in the minutes, right? The yeah. Root, yeah. All that stuff. Okay. Yeah, this is the sticker, and then we add yeah. that in there rather than spending okay. money for the stickers. We yeah. have liquor okay. license, 2015 liquor license, renew applications from Three Mountain Inn and Hospice. They have paid their fees. Um, what is your pleasure? Are they both, uh, what, let's class see, one first class? class is, let's see, stick three mountain in it is first class hotel license. Both are first class hotel license. Both, both one. <coughs> and Asta's is first class hotel license and also an outside consumption permit. Outside what did you say? Consumption permit so oh. that people can take. Oh, yeah, outside. Serve food outside. They oh, can take okay. their liquid. They take their liquor outside. That's not true for Green Mountain. Green Mountain, they don't do that. No. Okay. 
I mean the three men. I make a motion we accept their liquor license renewal. <coughs> Asked us in Three Mountain. Do we have a second? I'll first, second. First class liquor license renewal applications. I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And they all think we are signatures, which okay. will be on the tonight that I didn't have on the uh, license and we need to um, appoint another check signer temporarily until until we get a new town clerk that will be the other check signer. Um, Paul Frazier um, will be the check signer if all, everybody's in favor. He's here most of the time. Um, and this is a resolution. We need adoption. We need to um, make it approved to approve Paul Frazier as our check signer, temporary check signer, in case Terry couldn't do it. Um, and she had. We have to sign the, the chair has to sign the resolution um, to give to the bank. What is your pleasure? I move that we uh, make Paul our. Uh, Second signature or signing checks for the town of Jamaica. Do you have a second? Uh, I would say signator as opposed to signature because we don't require two signatures. Okay, so but he'd be the second signator. Exactly. Good point. Okay. I'll second it. Seems on. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I'm going to sign that. Um, Okay, Lou? Uh, well, I don't know if you had it on your agenda, but Paul and I had a very interesting uh, uh, session last week with both the uh, both Mark uh, Pickering and what's the name of the uh, engineer from? Well, Mark Pickering and me, Chris. Chris. I can't think of his last name. He's a new, the new guy. No, 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 but I'm thinking about the, uh, our engineer for the Goodyear Bridge. Oh, know? Peter Holman. Peter Holman. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Right. Uh, Paul, myself, Peter, and um, uh, gentleman, sure. Mark, and another person. Uh, uh, we went up to Pikes Falls Road, and we looked at those three culverts that uh, were. One of them was pretty badly racked up during the. Uh, I read the other two were uh, undermined, but they're still in place. Um, then we had. We also looked at a. Uh, a culvert. Well, first of all, we also looked at Pikes Falls Road to look at the uh, possibility of doing it um, uh, a Class Two road grant. Uh, one of the reasons we were a little bit unsure about the Class Two road grant was because we, if we were going to do these three culverts, we wanted to do them before the road. So that was part of the reason for looking at them both together. And a couple of interesting things uh, came out of that. First of all. Paul, you can fill in, you know, as I make uh, mistakes, you can correct me. Sure. But I think uh, basically he looked at those three culverts, Mark did, and said none of them are going to fail in the very short, short future. But basically we all agree that they have probably about a 10 year life expectancy when they're st going to start failing. The bottoms are going to start rusting out. So what, what Mark recommended is that in our future budgets, we, we put aside money every year to replace these three culverts so that in eight or 10 years, we'll have enough money put aside so we can actually replace those three culverts. Um, so it kind of leads to uh, another thing that was brought up today at the uh, Wyndham Regional Commission Transportation Committee hearing and that is the idea of a capital budget. We've already done capital budgeting for our highway equipment, and we've been following that capital plan pretty, pretty well, and things have worked out really well there. Uh, what we ought to do is identify all the large structures we have in town, as well as the town buildings, 
and come up with a real capital plan to address those. But in the short term, Mark recommended that we we look at um, those three culverts and plan on replacing them sometime in around 10 years. So that was the, the, the first thing that came out of that meeting. The second thing was that because we're going to wait for 10 years, he suggested that we apply for the Class 2 road grant this year. However, when we looked at his, his sheet, which he keeps, which identifies what towns are eligible, um, and that's based on the amount of money that's been given to them historically over time. And if you recall, we got one of these Road 2 grants four years ago or so to do uh, Pikes Falls Road, the uh, storm drain project, and I think we paved a mile of that road. And it looked like we would probably not get one this year, unless a number of other towns who are higher up on the list don't apply for these grants. Although we did say we should probably apply for it anyways, just in case. But Peter had a really interesting suggestion. And that is that if we don't apply for one this year and apply for it next year when we're more likely to get it, in the meantime, there's a lot of ditching work that should be done in preparation for that mile and an eighth, and the mile, the 128 mile miles, that he could come up with a what some kind of plan he had a, na a name for, it, but basically it's a ditching plan that he could pass on to Keith, and he said the cost of it would be about a thousand dollars a mile, so with 1.8 miles it would be about two thousand dollars, but it would give Keith a plan of attack so that in the next year he could do that work and then be ready so that when we apply for the class two road, it's not just a paving thing, but we will actually fix some of the problems along the way. He would recommend certain places where there would be culverts. He would recommend certain places where they would, he would do ditching. And the idea was is that if Keith were to rent, uh, we've done this before, is we've rented an excavator with a ditching bucket. And if we rented that for two or three weeks, we could probably do most of that work uh, this summer. Now, interestingly enough, I was at a WRC Transportation Committee meeting, and there is grant money from the Better Back Roads that I think is due, the grant application is due on the 15th. We have it here. Okay. And my, my suggestion is that we, we apply for that Better Back Roads because it's for just for this thing. Mm -hmm. And we apply to rent an excavator. We, we, we use this money to rent the excavator. So my thing, so I, 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 I saw Peter on his way out, and I asked Peter how quickly he could draw up something for us. Um, I guess it's just really a, well, the, the first thing we draw up for us is just a, uh, a, a, a cost estimate, and then we could approve it at our board meeting, and then he could then go out and do the actual work and uh, uh, have it ready for Keith, hopefully in time for this application to be out so we have an idea on what it might cost to do some of this. So anyways, I just wanted to pass that along. Uh, so my thinking is, is that based on what we heard last week, that we applied for this Better Back Roads grant for, for ditching and, and the like. That's the first thing. The other thing, and, and Paul, fill me in, you know, fill in that break. If you think of something that I, I left out. You're doing really good. At the meeting today, the Transportation Committee meeting, uh, a woman from VTrans uh, came in and did a, um, uh, a white paper, showed us a white paper on towns converting their stretch of town or state highway, converting it to a class one town road. In essence, the idea is to promote towns to convert like the areas in villages to become class one roads that are maintained by the town, but the town gets money from the state to do that, about $11,000 a year for every mile of class one road. And the advantage is that we actually have control of that one mile stretch or whatever it is from the post office 
to the cemetery, let's say. We don't have to ask the state if we want to put a sign over the road saying Jamaica Old Home Day. Mm. Uh, because it's our, it, it, it's our road now, not a state road. Like Brattleboro does that every year, you know, mm -hmm. have those signs. We don't have to ask them to, um, uh, you know, we want to plant trees. We don't have to ask them if we want to put more than, more than the, you know, more crosswalks. We want to put more crosswalks than we have. Right. We, we don't have to ask the state that. We have control of that, uh, of that land. Now, it's a little bit premature to actually apply for that, but I wanted to bring that up for your consideration. How does that work with plowing? I mean, the state would do, they pick we would up their plow? They would pick up their plow as they came to the other side and drop it. And then drop it. The, the only negative that I can see is that usually the state uses salt going through the town. Mm -hmm. We don't use salt because we have mostly dirt roads. Uh, we have to figure out a way to deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. But, you know, here we have a town road crew. Uh, two of the guys go through the town every time they go out and do their run. Yeah. Well, I think they, do they own that? Because they don't use salt, I don't yeah, think. They, they, don't, salt they, don't, they have no salt zone. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe. But, but it's an interesting idea. I wanted to bring it up just to think about mm -hmm. um, uh, if they had a list of candidate towns in Jamaica happen to be one of those candidate towns because it's a you know, village. Mm -hmm. The idea is that towns would want to control their village better. So, uh, interesting idea. How, how would that affect the contractual obligations we have for the sidewalks based on the already laid down? It wouldn't, it wouldn't change that. But the interesting thing is, is that they just come and plow and just throw everything onto our sidewalks. Our guys would probably do a better job of making sure that the sidewalks don't get iced up. What happens, like, say in the middle of the night, the, the state trucks go by come off? You know, We'd have to have our guys off probably, one so guy out perhaps more often. They'd have to be, kind of follow the state, and when they're, you know, because you wouldn't want this, the outside of town to be plowed, and the inside of the town not to be plowed. We'll have the same dilemma as we do with the sidewalks. Right, we, we, we have to coordinate that Is it going to be better. more costly for the town? Probably, but again, we get, some extra money for that too. So the eleven thousand, the state did an estimated about sixty five hundred dollars per mile is spent on plowing. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what they estimated. But anyway, it's an interesting idea. Yeah, let's bump those for Keith. Yeah, let's see what everybody thinks. Yeah, the it's idea of us controlling what goes on in the village. Yeah. Well, I like the idea of controlling it, but you know, when it comes to repaving it, when it comes to restructuring oh, right. it, comes Inter interesting. Paving is a separate project. Oh, they, that doesn't. That's not part of the eleven thousand. Every twelve to fifteen years, we would be on a on a uh, uh, idea of uh, cycle to be to be paid. Oh, so we're just talking. Well, actually, it's a state with a federal grant. Oh. All our class class one roads okay. are paved with a federal. So we're just talking about snow and. Trees and, and then fixing potholes during the course of the year. Or crosswalks. Cross me, that would yeah. be a biggie. We'd have to pay for the striping as opposed yeah. to. Uh, but even so. Hmm. Something to think about. Yeah. But I just wanted to bring that. The other thing that we, we, as part of this presentation, they talked about crosswalks. And the crosswalks that go across the state highway right now are paid for by the state. But the ones that go across, like by the. Uh, sure. By the Jamaica House and by the church, those are town ones. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, it's been two years since we've done them, and I think they're ready to be done. Yeah, they are. Uh, just the so other day. I would recommend that perhaps Paul talk to Keith about contacting a uh, company that might, uh, mm -hmm. maybe three companies as part of our purchasing right. policy. Um, yeah, we have to talk to at least three companies. Depends on how much it is. Yeah. We have to see how much it costs. But, and, and I don't know what you think about it, but I think we ought to be. Uh, doing something better with our little handicap place out here. Yes. As we do striking, we do a strike a handicap. Oh, that is kind of hard. But I was, I was, never mind, I was thinking of we need to do something with that entryway because in the winter it gets all ice and whatnot. That's another issue. Right? That's a that's a biggie. But as part of that, as part of striping, I'm thinking we ought to put a put striping out there for the handicap so. But isn't that dirt? No. That's, Thing. No, they just put, they put a lot of dirt on it because there was a lot of ice. Oh, okay. <laughs> it does look. It, it, yeah, I thought it was dirt. The sweeper will come and sweep it off. Okay. Right. So do you all agree that we, we ought to be striping the handicapped parking place? 
You're talking about this spot right here? I mean, is it mandatory? I don't know if we if we're we're up to code if we don't. Do we have to strike the whole thing? Just a just the area with, with it. Yeah. Their spot. That spot. Yeah, that spot. Do you have any like paint left over? Does the health I think it's harder than life has paint on the pavement? <laughs> it falls out of your truck. <laughs> does Does the health commissioner have to find out whether that needs to be striped or not? I don't think that'd be no. good luck, but. I, I think uh, maybe uh, call the D training for you. Know. Know. Or when he contacts the striker, maybe you could ask that question to them. They probably know the laws. Yeah. Because I personally don't think it needs to be striped with the sign. But that's my opinion. Well, so put, is that like wheelchair access? Is it big enough for a van to. Nobody that's knows because it's just a little a little thing of pole. We don't have much parking anyway. I know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We can figure that. We'll find out. Let's find out the answer first sure, and we'll decide no. whether we well, need it or not. Didn't we have a, didn't we have an inspection one time to see if we were compliant with handicap? I don't remember that. And that's what forced us to put the sign out there? I don't know. Oh. Well, the truth of the matter is that thing is more ignored than intended to. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you have anything else, Lou? No, that's it. Judy? Okay, town well, new uh, town hall well. Uh, we're in the works with the new easement. Um, I found out from um, Chris Tomberg that in fact, we uh, do have the right to share it with the private uh, residents. However, um, if we do it now, we have to re-permit. So um, it's in the works right now with Paul Gillies and the lawyer uh, down in Brattleboro to accept the words uh, share the well in the future. And since uh, the person who has, uh, who owns the land is not really wanting to do anything at the moment uh, that fits. So, so this hopefully is, that will go first. So this is directly opposite what you heard from yes. before. Yes, yeah, right. Um, Very much so. And it wasn't just me that, because yeah. uh, Steve Clark also yeah. had heard the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that's in the works, and hopefully that's going to be done. If the Heinz uh, signs it, uh, that should be coming very shortly. Have you heard I anything heard from Paul? Yet. No, I yet. talked to him directly, I think, uh, last week. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so, nothing, nothing yet. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, also, uh, water testing. One of the things that has come up is with this issue of not having potable water and uh, for hand washing, does that mean we're able to use the town hall? And uh, what was recommended was that we go and have the water, because we might be living under a myth that this water is not uh, drinkable. And so uh, we came to the conclusion that we should go get the water tested. And I've got all the paperwork to do it, and I've cleared it with Terry that I'm going to write the check um, and send it off so we can get the containers and we're going to go and see exactly whether that water is potable or not as it stands now, not the well. We still need the well. Um, but as you know, there are pipes that are broken underneath there and so forth, so it gets complicated. But that will help us if we run into a problem where we have to shut down the building, okay? Uh, and uh, for the well, uh, Steve Clark talked to uh, frost wells and pumps, and we have a new bid. And uh, so this would be just updating the one that we have already accepted. And what it is is our price for dr drilling the well is $8.50 per foot cost for the 19 steel well casing is $16 per foot. The grout would be $4 per foot and um, 
Mr. Frost says, I estimate that the complete job will cost approximately $6,850 with all of the current, uh, we did the steel well casing and all of the things that was in the, that were in the original um, price. Now, I think that this is a little bit higher. I don't have a number. Remember. I can't remember that either. So uh, I would like to uh, make the motion that we accept this new bid uh, updating the old one because of our issue of having right. to climb up the side of the hill. And that's a part of this, okay? So I move that we accept the uh, change bid of $6,850 for the digging of the well and preparing it. How does, i bring you back a second. How does this, we put this to bid or is this really the only sole source? Uh, we already have gotten a bid from him. He was a little bidder? He was, yes. At the time? Think so, right. yes. so the question now is if, if there were other bids, and he is now changing his bid, does that require us to put it back out to bid again? There's no second on this so. anyway. Right. I'll second it just to get the discussion okay. back. Okay, sorry. All right, any further discussion? Yes. All right. So the question is, that bring up, do we, are we then obligated to reopen the bids to the other people? It was just one other person, I believe. Unless this is a sole source, don't we have that as a, an obligation? We've been, I don't know, we've been working with him. I don't think, I'm trying to look, go back and see. Yeah. I don't think the price has gone up substantially yeah. since his first bid. Well, maybe a good idea is to see if it's, if it's you know, yeah, 10 or 15 percent, that might not be a big deal, but. I don't think it has. I was trying to think, when did he get the first bid? Do you remember, Judy? Seems like a long time ago. <laughs> Yeah, so, so well, see, that's why watching the price go up makes, I mean, I understand that because it's been like right. forever. But I'm thinking in terms of the other other, other outfit saying, I went and he gave you a bid and he took it and now he raised his bid. So I think that. We well, it, it's not that he raised the bid, it's that we, we are asking him to do more. Oh, more. Oh. Right. Okay, so uh, we've changed the. Yes. Particulars of the bid. Yes. Just sort of amended. It, so where does that leave the other other bidder? Uh, not he, he, uh, he have the option to bid um, with the new primers? I don't know the answer. I don't know that answer. I'm talking about answers, please. I think we probably have some discretion in that in our purchasing policy. I think by having gone out to bid once, I think if, yeah, if it was our response, if we were the ones that that changed the, uh, the specs because we found out more information, I don't think we have to go out to bid again. Right, because according to the engineer, I mean, all this stuff has to be done. Other things came up once we started working with the engineer. So and this is in response to our request, our request yes. for changes. Right. 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 Would be helpful. Not, yes, he, didn't, he didn't just up his price. Yes, yeah. and as, we, as he said, Judy said, he's been very cooperative. During this yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so we know what's going on. I'm just thinking in terms of the other uh, the opposition here. I, yeah, I don't see any, uh, any problem. I don't, I don't see any. We need another one, but. I think going up to bid is just going to slow it down even more. I know. I hate to even say it. I'm just trying to think of, you know, and be good. I know. As we can see, I, know, uh, I can't find the other bids. I can't either. I don't think I have them. I usually say that. So he doesn't even say actually that he's changing the bid. He's just now saying what it's going to cost. He's yeah. not referencing the bid. That's just an of what it's going to cost. Right. The bid is that Right. Yeah. Couldn't it be right. 10,000? Well, could be more, could be less. less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's, well, he's charging per foot. Right. Uh, uh, and that's an estimate of sure. the area. Right. I guess I'm just thinking that, oh, I had a well-off company and he was my opposition, and I bid, and he wanted, and then changed his price on it, and that would... But he didn't change his price. 
It doesn't say anything. Right. This is simply giving us a price. It doesn't say I've been forced by circumstances to raise it 10% or because of the items that you've added subsequent to the, I mean, there's nothing in here saying that. Right. <clears throat> And we, can, we can get in the bids, but it's going to put everything in. It's under $10,000. We could vote on the motion. I mean, it's under $10,000. Yeah. The motion doesn't pass. Yeah, it is under $10,000. It's under $10,000. I really don't think there's any issue that we have to start That's all That's true. Over under $10,000, mm -hmm. we don't have to. Right. Well, we don't have to go out to the newspapers for three bids. Can right. I, like, call the question and, and ask that we vote on this? Do we do that? The call the question requires a vote. It requires a vote. Next we have to uh, ask the, the a, a, ask us if we want to call the question. Okay. We have to vote. We have to vote on that. Okay. All right. This is new. Do you want to call a question? I yes. Go ahead. You got to move to call the question. I move that we we'll call the question. And I'll second it. No discussion. Let's ready to vote. And we vote on that. Okay. So you ask for vote. Okay, so now we need to vote to all in favor of accepting. No, no call the question. Jesus. That's okay. This is <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor to call the question. Aye. 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 Okay, now we vote on the original did, motion. Did you oppose, Paul? Huh? I didn't hear it. I didn't know I was staying opposed. Because what we're trying to do is we're cutting off my position. Okay. And so it would seem odd to me to vote in favor of cutting myself off. I have a lot of questions. No, because sometimes, well on this. sometimes it's appropriate to cut me off. This no, there's no more times. <laughs> no, we're just moving the thing along and then no. that goes to a vote. Sure. Yeah. For the original okay, motion. Okay, so now we need to vote for the original motion, which is lose. Right? Oh, wait a second. second. Okay. True, I did find it. Calling the question, though, there's no discussion. Sorry. No, but we're, we're moving to the vote now. Right. But sure. Once you call the question, there is no more discussion on the original right. motion. Right. Okay. That's the way it is. We've got to find a new Robert. <laughs> All right. Wow. So, does she do the motion over again? No. No. Okay. So, we have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. So, there's no discussion. Right. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Now there is a minority opinion, if, if, if there's a no. Yeah. No. There will be a minority opinion, no. Yeah, I mean, do you ask, you have to ask, all opposed. All opposed, I'm sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm opposed. <laughs> Having said that, now that she's given this yes. information. Yeah, I just found it. There is no difference in the bid. Very good. <laughs> it's the same, yeah. October 25th, 2013. Mark, it's the same exact, it's the exact same one. He's been very he nice. He pulled out of his file and just said, He must have, right. He's been very nice. Yes, yes. he has. Yep. Yes. So, that was all for naught. <laughs> so, okay, we got Paul's dad. So, if it was, say it was, and you said your minority opinion, and then they would ask, is anyone, after what you said, is anyone else in the, what do you call it, the, like, the prevailing <laughs> side? And Paul said that was a two thousand dollar difference. Would anyone like to change your vote? Then we might. As it happens, you don't. Okay, let's go on to the next. Judy, okay. do you have anything else? What is that? Do you want me to move? Do we have any other surprises? Do you have anything else? <laughs> well, let's see. I have another one. Okay. Of the same kind of thing. So hang in there. Uh, I hope I didn't lose it. Uh, now I'm on the. Transfer station. Okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, was suggested to me by Wyndham Solid Waste was to start working, and I think I had mentioned this earlier, start working on uh, the single stream of getting a bin or whatever we want to do uh, for uh, the additional piece that we need. Uh, for the caretakers and the haulers. So I got in touch with Triple T, who is already doing our work of removing uh, the construction and uh, what else is he doing? Compactor. And, compactor. Oh, that com compactor. So um, I said to, they said to me from uh, Wyndham, 
solid to start working on that now because they thought that the prices would start to go up after the 1st of July. So I did. And what uh, Peter Gaskell said to me that his prices are pretty much what he has already done. But so again, we're just upping the uh, contract to include another bin. So um, he will charge um, on call to uh, haul away one with 142.50, which I think is what it costs now. And then tipping fee for recyclable is uh, $45 and that's subject to market change. And they will also provide a 30 cubic <coughs> roll-off box, which is about the size that we have now. Is it going to have the cover? No, just a minute. Or an 18 cubic yard gambrel roof recycling box. Now that's what we put right now, the uh, <coughs> bottles and plastic and the paper, that's the gambrel roof, okay? Like our house. <laughs> and uh, that would be no charge, either the 30 cubic or the 18 cubic one. So I, I recommend that we are or basically saying all we're doing is increasing his contract since he's already doing this work. So what is your pleasure around that? The actual increase will be what? Um, $142 when we ask them to come pick it up. For each pickup. Yeah. Or uh, a tipping fee of $45 for the recycling piece. So. It's, it's interesting. Um, um, I talked to Peter yeah, I think three or four thing. months ago, and he oh. actually was going to charge $25 instead of $45. Oh, I see. But the recycling market has gone way down. Yeah, right since uh, the cost of oil is down, pretty much plastics go, go with the cost of oil. So he's actually $20 more per ton than he, uh, he was just four or five months ago, which is interesting. So when they pick up that container, it's yeah. $142.50 right. plus $45 tipping fee? I don't know. Do you? Yeah, $45 per ton. So if you got two tons in that container, it would be another $90. Okay, plus the 140, 140, plus right. the 142.50 yeah. to haul it away. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So it's actually just increasing the, the contract that we already have with yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then hopefully it, it won't be too long because I, I suspect the district is going to go through the street. Or yeah. actually, what will actually happen is what we're recommending now is that the district go out of the recycling business totally and let the private sector get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he actually takes it up to Rutland. Uh, he writes in this letter processing. Right. So this means we'll get another green thing or another blue one? Uh, uh, well, I don't well, know color that, that. That's I mean, our choice of okay. which one. I mean, Why don't my one for the guard, the uh, plastic? Yeah. No, there'll be one for everything, paper and plastic. Oh, okay, for, just one for, week for everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just my, for use by the caretakers. My oh, recommendation okay. Okay. around this is let us on the committee okay. m make the decision about what kind of bin we want. Okay. okay. But I need you, all of us, to say, can we go ahead with this? So this is just for contractors and businesses, so they just yeah. dump their stuff all in one, and we still continue to use the yes. other one. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, the other thing is uh, we also are trying to figure out where to put it uh, when it happens. So uh, yeah. I have to talk to Keith about that and yeah. see what he thinks. So. Actually, the, uh, there, there really isn't much of a choice. The 30 yarder is an open top container, and we don't have any cover for it. Like, a, 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 like we, you know how our dumpsters right now, our, uh, our, our C&D is underneath those, those buildings, right. those pole barns. Yeah. Uh, we really don't have a choice because we don't have a pole barn for it. Well, I think we'll talk yeah. about that at our meeting. Okay, yeah. I have a question, just one question. Sure. Now, are these for the garbage bags, too? For everything, or just recycling? No, that everything else stays the same. It's this is just, just that we're increasing right. 
for the caretakers and the haulers that single stream recycling. 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 Not not residents residents are recycling. still going to be doing the, the uh, double. Stream. Okay. Okay. That stays okay. the same. So, the, so the, if I understand correctly, anybody who is doing it commercially can come and throw anything. No, not garbage. No, not garbage. Just recyclables. Just yeah. the recyclables. Paper and, and they still got to do the green bag business. And Absolutely. Bag. So this is just recyclables yeah. for contractors only. Just right. caretakers. 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 Only. And then right. everybody else is putting it in the other. And we won't lose any money by having an extra one for caretakers. We won't lose anyone with money. We're going to, it's going to cost us money. We're, it wouldn't cost us if we... Uh, right. The idea behind doing it for the caretakers is because we're asking them to add another part to their business. Right. And, and to do it in dual stream, I think, is a, is a little bit more of a burden. We've also made that... We have made that decision that we were going to do it, so... It, I, okay. Now, I'm just figuring yeah. out how this container works. So it has to be either plastic or cardboard or whatever in for this us. container for us to receive that those people, the caretakers, whoever, they can't just dump. dump no, them. the caretakers can put all of that together in one. They can right. put the cardboard. plastic, plastic cardboard. Plastics. Right, that's it though. That, yeah. They still have to go through putting garbage in the garbage. In the, in the, the container paper bag or the okay. uh, green bag. Green bag. Green bag. Right. Okay. okay. So, what would you like to do? I, I'm... You still confused? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no, I'm becoming less and less confused, but I, not do, I don't like that I'm getting less confused. I don't remember, and maybe I can be refreshed, why it is we're giving the contractors something we're not giving the other citizens. Oh, I see. Okay. We're saying to them, okay, because you're a contractor, you don't have to do the same thing the other citizens have to do. Right. It's and not, he, remember, it's not the word contractor, it's the word right. caretaker. Caretaker. Yes. Right. Because okay. the contractor could be things, people like Stuart and yeah. Yeah, yeah. others. This is caretakers. Okay, the difference is? Caretakers, uh, with what caretakers are. Oh, you're talking about collecting trash from somebody else's house. As opposed to fixing, working in it. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the caretakers, nonetheless, yes. are being given. A privilege. A privilege over the other yes. citizens. Right. I'm not sure why. Well, according to what Lou was saying, is that we're asking them to do something more to increase their work by having them have their housing people do split uh, recycling. That, like we as the residents, we have to do the paper, we have to do the plastic. Right. And so, they're going to have a hard enough time getting the people to split their recycling from the garbage because uh, they're going to say, huh, we can do it, we don't care, and which a lot of uh, second homeowners or whoever will most likely do. So we're trying to make it easier for them by doing single stream. And uh, we may be doing it a step ahead of what we're, that residents are going to be doing within a year. It could be within six months after, yeah. within oh, six months after. It's the as if uh, their window solid is working on single stream mm -hmm. and getting rid of the, the double stream. So, but you're right, they are getting, they are getting a special privilege. They're getting a special privilege, yes. and by extrapolation, the people who can afford somebody to take their trash are not having to go through it. So what the idea between, between having the individuals taking responsibility for recycling and reducing the cost of all this stuff, we're basically giving these guys a pass. And not only are we giving them a pass, we're paying for it. We're picking up the tab for these people not doing what we're asking our full-time citizens to do. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm in favor of that. Well, we already voted it. When did that, that's the part I missed. Oh, we discussed it during the budget. We, we put money into the yeah. budget for this program. Yeah, I'm, I apologize if I missed that. But somehow, now that it's becoming increasingly clear, I'm becoming less confused. <laughs> now that I'm no longer confused, I'm not happy. So, Steve, I'm going to take the 
our containers, our dual stream containers, the same price, right? So right now, the dual stream containers are picked up by the district. Right. And because we pay uh, an assessment to the district, that assessment covers the cost of picking up that material. Right. Okay, just right now we're just paying for the compactor. Right. We pay for the compactor directly. Directly. And triple T. The, triple T. And the uh, recyclable stuff, we don't pay for at all. Well, we pay for it through our assessment, I mean, but we, we don't pay directly. Assessment. Right. Right. But we don't pay every time they pick up Correct. a load. With this one here, the new one that they're going to get, that we're going to get, is going to cost us. Uh, uh, well, well 140 now plus, yeah. uh, if, it's, if there are two tons in there, it'll be about $90, so about $230 every time it gets picked up. Okay. We're already paying those numbers when they come and pick up uh, any of the construction stuff. Mm -hmm. We're already paying $142. So, so they have that particular contract. Then we get a little reimbursement from the contractors because they have to pay in order to dump their stuff. There's a tipping fee. Tipping right. fee that they pay yeah. us, right? If, if, Does the contractors, but not the caretakers. Yeah, yeah. caretakers. Right. The caretakers, if I estimated that it would probably fill up once a month and we would have to pay it for 12 months, so therefore $230 times 10 would be 2300 plus another 600 or 500 so about $2,800 a year to, for that program. Okay, so then if Wyndham Regional, not Wyndham Regional, uh, Wyndham Southwest goes to the single stream for everybody. Well, they probably won't go single stream. What they probably will do is get out of the recycling business. And what that means okay. is that we will then have to, we will then have to contract with Triple T to, to pick up our recycling. Okay. But our assessment would go down. Right. By about half. Right. Because what is our assessment now? About, about 14,000. 14, right. Another thing in the positive is that it would be quick. Say there's a line of four people at the transfer station, and three of them are caretakers. Mm -hmm. They can just go there and unload their single stream. In the separate spot, right. And then, obviously, we have some. And some inside information that may switch to that anyway, and then we won't be switching back and forth with the caretakers. I just picture. I understand what you mean about other people standing there watching these guys throw on their own bid, and I'm separating it all. Right. That's that's my objection well, too. But the, the the reason I'm an advocate for this yeah. is because if if we start in July and train our caretakers to go dual stream. They would have to put two of these buckets in each one of their houses, not one. And then maybe six months later, we would then have the whole district go single stream and they could down to one. So we'd be training them to do something that we're eventually going to have to take them, take that training away and do something different. Like, for example, um, uh, right now, we have to, we're going to have to put, see how that trash container over there? We're going to have to put two containers over there. We're going to have to put one for paper, one for plastic, and another. Because we have dual stream. If we had single stream, we only have to put one container over there. I, I appreciate the, the construct that you're, you're suggesting that we don't have to retrain them every so often. I, I think that most of them are trainable. But my concern is that we make a second group of citizens who don't have to comply with the July 1st law. Oh, they're, they're, they're complying with it, just in a different way. Um, they're complying yeah. with it using single screen versus, versus single screen. I'm talking about the family who is separating the recyclables from you know, paper and plastic. Mm -hmm. And then this is a group of people who no longer have to do that because they're paying a caretaker. And because they're paying a caretaker, they don't have to comply with the recycling Directors. Yes, they still do, uh -huh. but they are only going, they don't have to separate it like you and me. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to say, that we're talking about people who don't have to do it like you and me. I'm thinking, personally, that the residents of Jamaica ought to be on the same foot. Well, I, I actually agree with you on that. And, and the, the fact is, is we can go single stream and have Triple T do it all. Uh, but 
that would mean some major changes yeah. in our relationship with the window solving. And actually, so, Westminster just did that. Uh -huh. Westminster just went single street. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, yeah, that's where they got the 52 bags. Right. They gave uh, Vernon went single stream last yeah. year. Brattleboro wants to go single stream, yeah. but they've been they've been saying we're, we're we're dedicated to staying with the district and whatever they do. So single stream is coming. I guess I'm thinking of there's an awful lot of things that are changing right now. We're asking people to bag things up. We're getting people upset because they have to put their diaper bags in a green bag or whatever it is. To then make a second a separation between classes of citizens in the same time frame as that just seems like we're asking a lot of and paying for the privilege we're asking for trouble and we're paying to get this extra trouble to make somebody else's life a little bit easier right which is true and i i, I guess i'm against that that's what it sounds like doesn't it? but one of the things that i because i i agree with you that we're going to have residents who are going to say how come we can't do that mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would like, if we go that route, uh, to put the bin down where the uh, refrigeration is and not close to where it's a double mm. so that it's separated, uh, will, which will kind of help the situation a little bit. Now, in say, terms of say we didn't... We didn't do this, just say we didn't do this, and the caretakers had to do the recycling, just the like people us. had to do the recycling. If they didn't want to for some reason, or if they wanted to put all their cardboard in, in our green bags, can they do that and just throw it in our garbage? Uh, <clears throat> what happens in that case there? It, it, it's an interesting question. The, the answer is they would be doing something illegal. It is right. illegal to do that. The problem is, is that nobody's there to enforce it. Right. Unless we, like Winhall, say that we will not allow people to throw recycling in their green bags, right. and, we're, and if they do, we'll cut them open. Yeah. Unless we do something like that, then they don't have to. And because they don't have to, my concern is that the caretakers will, because it's so difficult to do dual stream, will just not do it. Put it, and they'll all be thrown away. Then the problem is, is that because they're not recycling, they're in violation of their wind and solid waste permit. Because their wind and solid waste permit says you have to re recycle. So then the question is, how does the wind and solid waste then enforce no, enforce that? So the reason I'm all cons all for this program is I want to make it as simple as possible for the caretaker. Because we're asking them, we're not asking the residents to change their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We're asking the caretakers to make a big change in their business practice. And I think it's, it's easy. But interestingly, though, when the caretaker goes home, he has to do it the right way. Yes. If he lives in Jamaica. Yeah. If he lives in Jamaica. So we're, we're really, mm -hmm. instead of having two bids to put this stuff in, or. Or he can put it in his own truck and bring it. We know that's what's coming. That's just reverse of being a character. Come on. Sorry, Paul. The answer is answered. Oh, but he's that good. The reason Vernon went to a single stream is because it's a lot easier. I, I think that our caretaker, which we only have one, and we have and just quite a few caretakers. Not only caretaker, our, our transfer station attendant, it's only one there. Right. Um, if we were a rich town where we could have two people really be on them, I think it would make it a lot easier. I think, and people, we know just a little bit of what we're going through, they get angry mm -hmm. and take it out on the caretaker and whatnot. And I think when we talked about this earlier, mm -hmm. we were trying to alleviate the anger, the frustration that these people have to do right and maybe this would be the right way to go for the benefit of the town and not think of you know we're not charging the the, rent or the people the second homeowners or whatever i mean i know the caretakers get paid for taking the trash and stuff like that um i don't know i think we have to think of our 
transfer station attendant, the stuff we're going to have to go through, the, all the complaints. I mean, do we want it to be a circle? It's just going to be a vicious circle. It's just going to, I think, just snowball into where everybody's just going to get angry, the caretakers, because they're... See, I was, I was on your side right to the point, please. I agree this is going to cause grief for the attendant. If he's got two sets of citizens, one is a caretaker and one is an actual citizen, and they have two sets of rules, then it's going to get even more vicious. It's going to be more hated. It's going to be in a... It, to me, we're exchanging one unhappy group with another unhappy group. Right. But we're actually paying to make this other unhappy group. Yeah. So we're going to shell out money to, make, to give this particular group of citizens a... Uh, Can we charge it for a second? <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like we're asking for more trouble and we're paying for it as opposed to training people to use the bags. Caretakers have to tell their people, that's the law in the state of Vermont. This is how we're going to do it. And I don't think we ought to be taking that burden away from them. And I understand where you're coming from because I know when... We go on vacation, um, the town that we go in, they started the pay as you throw. So they've got the containers with the garbage, and then they have their cardboard, and they have their um, containers with the uh, bottles and cans and stuff like that. And then they, when it's time to pick them up, they just, everything's right there. Yeah. So they train them how, you know. It's, it's going to take an adjustment. Time. Everybody's going to have to adjust, including the caretakers. So. As part of this I, I don't know. I, I, I see where everybody's coming from, but how do you make it right? Yeah, I don't know if there's a right answer. What do you mean by it'll jeopardize our relationship with Triple T if we don't do this? Oh, I didn't mean Or did I misunderstand that? Yeah, what I, what I see is that we're going to make the caretakers angry or we're going to make the residents angry. That's what I was saying. But they're going to be angry anyway. Especially after we've just been standing, sitting here, saying, two separate classes of citizens on film mm -hmm. and you know people are watching that so that kind of you know puts the kibosh to well, I think it was, a single I think it was quite an evaluation I think it was quite an exaggeration right I don't think we met two classes of citizens <laughs> well it's that's two, what right that's it's, what people are going to hear it's the second homeowners people who own the second home I know what, day and what I, I know I got it yes I understand that but when we were talking about the single screen before, it made total sense to me, and now it still does for the caretaker. I understand it's going to be a mess if Mark's up there or Linda or Walter, yeah. even if we did it all one way, we did it two different ways, it's going to be tough. It is going to be very difficult. Even though for we, them. we know that, or we have a good idea because of Lou's involvement with, I mean, with really the things that are coming. Mm -hmm. that. I mean, there's really not much difference than what we do now. It's just that they have to purchase the bags, use the green bags, put those in instead of the bags they buy at the grocery store, and they still recycle. It's no, the same. But, but most second homeowners, yeah, these I mean, caretakers do not recycle. Most of the right. caretakers do not collect recyclables. Right. Well, it's not cost effective for them. Right. Now we're going to make them. This law is going to make them collect recyclables. Don't you think we ought to make them teach the second homeowners? I'm sure the towns that they come well, from, yeah. they must have to recycle. Or the caretakers. Most of us are probably using single stream at home. Single stream is much more predominant now in, in, than, than dual stream. Okay. And the caretakers. And, now, what you know, they, they would pass on and they, they're not going to sort that stuff out for the same money they're getting. No. They're going to raise their prices. So, or they're just going to... Right. How much would it cost us if we went to single stream for the residents? For the residents? Mm -hmm. um, we, we produce about one container per week. One container per week is about two or, two or three tons, so it would be about $30 a week. About $300 mm -hmm. a week. About oh, two hundred fifty dollars a week, about. So for so for ten weeks, that'd be twenty five hundred dollars. For uh, to about four thousand dollars a year. Yeah, can you do the math? Uh, and you went for thirty five hundred dollars a year. If it was <laughs> so three hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars a week times fifty two, 
I mean, maybe we should do that for the residents too. That would mean that we would be doing 13,000. 13,000? 250 times 52. Does that include the caretakers? That would include that everybody. That's everybody? And it's both. We just like 250. Correct. And we already paid 14,000 to the, to the district, of which about half of that is for that service. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm wondering if we should do it for everybody. What does that mean uh, for our relationship with the Wyndham Summit? Nothing. They'd be, they'd be making off because we'd be, we'd be, we'd be paying for a service twice. we don't get. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they we're already paying for this. Right, and Brattleboro's going to be doing the same thing. Yeah, so we still have to pay for their service, we have to pay the, um, the assessment. assessment. Right. Why? And that's what some towns are out Because uh, this program is paid for by the assessment, not by a fee. We've been talking about fee for service, but nobody wants to go there. So we, our assessment is for just the recycling? No, about half of our assessment is for the recycling. The other half pays for uh, the, general, the general administration, doing our SWIP, uh, doing education with the schools, uh, all the other things that the district does. Actually, when I talked to Bob Spencer about getting an RFP for it, he really was pushing me to go all the way for everybody with triple T. I mean, I much prefer that the cost. Would our, would our assessment go down? No. It won't go down. No. No, we would still be paying. Our assessment would go down if the district decided to get out of the recycling business, yeah. but we haven't made that decision. Right. The, the, the board has decided to evaluate to see what, what happens in the first three to four months in Act 148. And then they might make a decision. Then they will, well, before the next budget comes out, they'll make a decision. So then the question yeah. comes up that you just brought up, do we need to make a decision on this today? Is this conversation, this discussion, something we have to draw to a close today? No. The only thing that uh, my concern is time is marching on. Yeah. And so I think we we need to well, could we not, have not to run into something and make right. a big mistake, but at least I guess we should be really considering it. I would think maybe by the beginning of May. Yeah, we've got to get the, give the caretaker some kind of instruction. Right. Right. I would think, yeah. yeah. Do you think if we had our next meeting to make the final decision? We could give it some time. I suspect maybe we might hear from citizens on this. Or other people, as you pointed out, that are watching us on TV right now. And that's yeah, hard for us to figure it out and think what we think is best for both caretakers and for the yeah. uh, for the citizens of Jamaica, the residents. So, it, am I hearing correctly that if we go single stream for everybody, it will cost us thirteen thousand dollars a year more? Approximately, based on in in our taxes. Right. right. One thing we can do is. Uh, this is what we would probably do if we did go single stream later, is we could purchase a compactor. Uh, instead of having the box, the single stream box, we would use a compactor, throw all our recyclables in the compactor, and we would end up with double the amount or triple the amount of materials every trip. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we would be saving uh, uh, transportation costs, which is the biggest piece of that. Yeah. What does the compactor cost? Yeah. Compactor costs yeah, uh, about eight thousand dollars for a used one, and because we're not three phase, we probably have to put a three phase converter in there, so about twelve thousand dollars. But that money would be paid back within three to four years, so we'd we save that. Money. that but we have that in no, we have that into our we have a uh, fund, uh, a reserve account for the transfer station. We're putting four thousand dollars a year into that, knowing that these things were coming. Okay, maybe we ought to get our figures together, get our stuff together before the next meeting, and then come up, have some figures that we'll, we can work with and see what's best for everybody. Does that make sense? Okay. Financially, too. Yeah, we don't want to burden the citizens. Why don't you let me come up with a, a, a price for a compactor as well? Okay. okay. And uh, so our committee will be doing some of, we'll be doing the legwork. Yeah. In order and then present yeah, it if to you. Could you do that. Yes, yeah. Okay. I mean, you've done a lot and we appreciate it. 
so much. This is a difficult. Oh, it's very, it's difficult, very difficult. But you know, it, it's change for all of us. So. Right. But it may be worthwhile going that route. You know. And I've been pushing that at the district all yeah. year. I've been um, failed at my attempt to do it, but that's what I've been pushing. So we'll have a couple weeks to get, okay. get the stuff together. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that one on hold. Okay. So, so do we have a bet? Do we have a Actually, let me, let me do this. Let me do this. What if you were to off? Uh, well, what if you were to uh, ask me as your representative to make a motion at the district the next meeting that the district leave this, the the recycling business and leave it up to the private sector? Beginning of July first. How would that affect us financially? Financially, we wouldn't have to pay that that extra fee for uh, mm -hmm. receivables. Oh, they don't be half. Well, okay. what would happen is we would then go with the compact and we probably right. right, and then we would contract with Triple T. Okay, so we have to give you permission. We need a motion. We need a motion. If you make a motion, motion. make you do it. I'll do it. Hold <laughs> it. Can you just run that by me? Yeah. He's smiling way too much. Judy, I want you to come with me to that meeting. <laughs> I know what he's going to go up against. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. 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 And he's been I've only been down there like one, twice, I think. Or, <laughs> and I know why the things are having trouble changing. Yeah, there's because a lot of resistance to change, as we all know. People have been there a really long time. Mm -hmm. have. Why don't we move to the motion? Okay, I move that we um, authorize our representative to the Wyndham Salad Waste. Uh, board meeting to suggest to make a motion to make a motion that we uh, that make that, 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 that the district oh. go out of the recycling business. Oh, okay. That the district leave it to the private sector. Did you get that, Ed? No. <laughs> that the district go out of the recycling business, and that each. And leave it to the private sector. And leave it to the private sector. Yeah. When's the next meeting? May. So that'll be a little time. Okay, do we have a second? You want to read it back to us? I'll second it so you can read it. <laughs> Any further discussion? Quick one. How sure are we that there is a private sector to turn this over to? We just saw Triple T tell you what they what they charge That would be the private sector at least. We could put it out for, for RFP. Well, but, see, but Triple T is a transport. They need a place to transport it to. They, they have their own. They're they have their own, own uh, transfer station there. Oh, do they? Oh, so they're doing their own collection. They're doing it for Vernon. They're doing it for Hinsdale. Uh, I think they went to one other town. All right, so Triple T is not just hauling it, it's also disposing it. They bring it to Rutland, right? Yeah. So actually, Casella runs the thing in Rutland. Okay. Could you read that back for us? I will move to authorize our representative against the district to go out of the recycling business and leave it to the private sector. Is that right? Yeah, I guess, yeah, that Could sounds you. good to me. Okay, that's it. That's what I moved. <laughs> I'll, I'll put in the other two that are right. having right. visitors. So. And we have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Right, Good luck. <laughs> Judy, what about that meeting? <laughs> I think I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else, Judy? What was that? Oh. Uh, yeah, I, that's it. Okay. Paul? Not a chance. No. <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, I was in contact with Carl Gillies about uh, appointment of the interim town clerk. We, uh, motion to appoint our assistant town clerk as an interim town clerk, and she will serve as an alternate town clerk or interim town clerk until a new town clerk has been appointed. And that's actually a, a good thing because right now all of the legal documents still have Pat's name on them and we right. need to change that. And according to the statutes, um, we need to do this. And therefore, I would move that. 
Okay. And the assistant town clerk is Terry. Right. Terry. I didn't know whether she was hired as she that was what she was hired as. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just so everyone knows. She was tre she was appointed as treasurer. Appointed as treasurer. And then appointed as assistant town clerk. And then okay. the town clerk is assistant treasurer. But we need an interim town clerk right now. Because when you don't have a town clerk, you don't have an assistant town clerk. Mm -hmm. According to the statutes. So we have a motion. Mm -hmm. Do you have a second? Who made a motion? I did. Do you have a second? I'll second it. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, uh, we'll get the paperwork ready for Terry tomorrow. Okay, let's um, see. Um, you said what happened? Uh, June. Okay, we received from the state of Vermont 2015 reappraisal activity and there is an ending for 2015. Uh, we received from Mr. Sosimo Industries their gravel pits and the cost of their sand, shore pack, miscellaneous and stuff like that. Um, There's going to be another, we received a special use permit for the Salmon Hole 5K Fun Run uh, race on uh, July 25th, and the uh, Home Day Committee took care of that and had their special permit for that. And I, Believe that we have to send them something which the state insurance form and that has been there. Yeah, the only problem with that is whether or not we're going to have the road open. No, no, no. That's the state park. Oh, I'm sorry. State they're park. Not going no, 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 no. Oh. State park. No. They're not going that way. They're not going that way. They're not going that way. Oh, sorry. Um, let's see. Do we need to send this? Huh? And then. I don't think so. I'd like to go into executive session on a uh, um, real estate issue. That would be a contractual issue. Contractual issue, okay. I move that we go into executive session for a contractual issue. Second. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll go to that. All right. Uh, now, <coughs> for his benefit, is there going to be anything? There's not going to be a decision. There's nothing he needs to sit around no. for. You go.